Hey guys, quick pen mail video again today. I've got another one coming tomorrow too, which to me is a little more exciting than the one today. But I picked up a couple of inexpensive vintage fountain pens to, that just showed up in the mail today. Um, and I uh, got these from Spear Bob. I've bought a lot from him in the past, a lot of uh, vintage pens. One of the things I like about Spear Bob is, number one, he's very affordable. As a matter of fact, there was one pen I purchased recently. I found almost half the price through Bob. Uh, the only thing is, I didn't know if it was fully restored or not, so at least I know that it was fully restored, the one I purchased, uh, not just have a new sack in it kind of thing, and it was going to be in great shape because I trusted the guy I bought it from, but I trust Bob on a lot of stuff too, so you never know. Um, but um, you know, I bought these two, and these were not all that expensive, I think about 50 bucks for the two of them together, thereabouts, maybe 53 somewhere in there. And uh, this one actually looks a lot like some of the other pens that I've got. Uh, it's from the 1950s, and it's a lever filler. It is a semi, or a, or I guess closer to like a full hooded nib. I do not know the manufacturer. Apparently neither did Bob, because uh, he said it was unbranded. The only thing you can see is it was owned by a Paul Y. Moyer. So, if you are... Paul Y. Moyer or his family and he owned this pen during the 1950s and 60s or so. If you want it, I'm holding it for ransom. Come up with some money and I'll <laughs> gladly send it to you. Uh, but uh, anyway, there, there is no branding on this pen whatsoever as far as uh, who manufactured it and maybe I'll run across that info because I do have, uh, like I said, some other pens that are also unbranded but we know what company was giving them away kind of thing to their employees sort of thing. That's what it kind of reminds me of. So um, I have not inked this thing up yet. It just came in the mail today. I'll, I'll, I'll do that here in just a few minutes and we'll just see how it writes together and we'll find out, all right? And then I ordered this one here. And one of the things, uh, this is a third tier manufacturer called High Rider, H-I, W-R-I-T-E-R. -E and I ordered this one because number one, it was, in great shape. I mean, this is a fantastic uh, shape pen as far as its condition. It's got the flat top, the black on the on the top and uh, on the bottom. So on the cap and on the bottom of the uh, the barrel. It's got High Rider right there on the clip. Uh, High Rider was a third tier manufacturer. They were not real famous. They didn't make top quality pens, or at least were not known for it. They weren't one of the big four. And uh, it's got a nib on it. And I'm I'm be honest with you, even under a loop. I'm finding a hard time um, getting the name of it. I think it says micro on it, but uh, uh, I will see if I can put it under my microscope. Um, and let's see how that one will actually show up a whole lot closer than what I can get out of a loop. It is another lever filler, and this one does have a new sack in it. Now, Bob, uh, on his uh, advertisement for sale, said this was in the 1920s, which, you know, I don't necessarily doubt that, but I'll be honest with you, I'm thinking more on in the 30s, only because and because the, the very reason I got this was because um, it reminded me a little bit, and it was really hard to tell from the pictures um, on his website. It was really hard to tell from the pictures uh, how close it might have been to like my Parker Duo Fold. To me, it was obvious that it was uh, the same kind of concept, um, and it was you know, both of them are orange. And uh, it's got the flat top on the top and the flat on the bottom. This one being a button filler from 1932, circa 1932. Uh, and this one uh, being ostensibly from the 20s. Maybe into the 30s, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I'll do a little more research on the brand. I've never owned a high writer before. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ink them both up. Um, this one's obviously already inked because you probably saw my pen mail video on that. Um, and uh, I will ink these both up here. I'll put the same ink in them both just to make it fast and easy. Then I'll be right back and show you how they write uh, and uh, give you some idea of whether or not I like them and uh, give you a few ideas for stuff to add to your collection. Okay, I am back and I have just inked these babies up. I didn't want to bore you with the ink up process. I can tell you that the lever on this high rider is actually pretty stiff. And I don't know how well it filled uh, compared to this one. This baby I know right here, you could hear the nice gurgling sounds uh, that you would expect uh, when uh, filling up a an aspiration style uh, filling system like you have with um, the lever. And this one, um, yeah, we'll see them both. Let's do this one first just because I'm uncertain. 
but let's see how well and I, I, guys I like I do like vintage I like new pens too but I also really really love vintage pens and um, it's interesting because you can actually find some really good pens at a really good price if you know where to look and they can be a joy to have I've got drawers full of uh, vintage ones so this is a high rider This is a fine nib, definitely a fine nib, um, and it is not quite as smooth as I was I was hoping it would be. But then again, it's kind of a generic. It's probably like a stainless steel kind of nib. It's definitely a not a gold nib, um, and uh, it definitely is rigid. So it is a very rigid nib. So I'm going to call this a a fine nib. And you're not really going to get any really great line variation. You get a little bit, a little bit more ink flow. And I think this pen was, you know, thirty to thirty-four dollars, and I got it just for the curiosity of it, just because I wanted to see how it looked, um, and I wanted to be able to put it side by side uh, with my Parker and uh, see how they looked together to see if they how similar they were and see how different they were just because I've never I've never had either one of these before now Parker yeah I had Parker pens but I haven't had the Parker duo fold until just recently and I definitely have never had a high rider in my collection so I wanted to see how badly uh, one was a copy of the other and <laughs> since they were they could have been contemporary manufactured you can see definitely that the duo fold senior um, is definitely bigger and just for grins let's see how well this writes by comparison so this and I would expect yeah it does write a lot better this still has a medium uh, or a fine rather nib a rigid nib but still is a lot smoother than was this and that's kind of what I expected. I mean, for the kind of money that I paid for, for that, compared to the money that I paid for this, and this being a third-tier manufacturer, I didn't have a lot of high expectations uh, for the high rider. And oh, just to let you know, too, the ink that I put in it is Birmingham Pens Allegheny Arsenal Gunpowder Black. This is one of my favorite black inks. Uh, so if you ever buy from the Birmingham Pen Company, BirminghamPens.com, uh, you'll get a chance to try some of that. Uh, but I do have several bottles of it here on the, on the shelf, and it is one of my black, my favorite black inks, and I use it extensively. So that's why um, I chose that particular ink, because you know I got a lot of it, and <laughs> and it's a good ink. And so this one is an unknown, an unknown brand. Now, this unknown brand writes a lot smoother than this High Rider. I can tell you that. Um, so this one. Uh, with the hooded nib from the 1950s I can really tell it does my handwriting different though uh, with how thin that line is I don't expect to get any line variation because of the hooded nib steel nib and probably um, you know it's going to be more rigid anyway because of the fact that it is a hooded nib um, an unknown brand so I don't know what to expect as far as its quality but it actually is a much smoother writer I've had other pens in my collection that are a lot like this and uh, they actually all write halfway decent so um, you know Paul Moyer actually had a halfway decent writing fountain pen back in the 1950s and probably into the 60s so not bad just a little bit of scratch and feedback but it's uh, depends on if you roll it roll it yeah you're not gonna get that great and you're not gonna get any real line variation but if you just hold it like normal and during the course of everyday writing for for I gotta do my checkbook here in just a little while yes I still keep an analog checkbook um, but um, I'm gonna probably use this to fill in my checkbook and with all the bill payments that I'm about to make since uh, today was payday at work. So anyway, there you go. Pen mail for today. And these are my two babies that just came in. Vintage, uh, 1950s, 1920s maybe, into the 30s. 
Now, my next video, um, and you know, some people consider what's coming a grail pen. Tracking says it'll be here tomorrow, uh, but I finally broke down and bought um, a Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. I've been wanting one for quite a while, for several years now. Just never did it until I got a really, really good price on one. So, all right, and that should be coming, and I'll show you that when it arrives, and hopefully that'll be tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.